Top 10 Ancient Artifacts That Shouldn't Exist What if the history you were taught in school is a lie? Not a deliberate deception, but a story with missing pages, a comfortable narrative haunted by objects that defy its simple, linear progression. What if our ancestors, whom we often imagine as primitive and unenlightened, were not so simple after all? What if they possessed a knowledge of science and engineering so advanced that it would not be seen again for a thousand years or more? This is the unsettling question posed by a collection of strange and controversial objects known to archaeologists and historians as out-of-place artifacts or OO parts. They are whispers from the deep past, physical paradoxes that appear in the wrong time and the wrong place, challenging the very timeline of human innovation. They are the glitches in the neat code of history, and today we will count down the 10 most profound and mystifying examples that suggest the story of our past is far stranger, more advanced, and more mysterious than we have ever been told. We begin our journey at number 10 with a small, unassuming, yet deeply puzzling object the Roman dodecahedron. These are small, hollow objects cast in bronze or stone with 12 flat pentagonal faces, each face having a circular hole in it of a different diameter. Knobs of unknown purpose protrude from each vertex. Over a hundred of these have been found across the former territory of the Roman Empire, from Wales to Hungary, mostly dating from the 2nd to the 4th century AD. And here is the mystery. Despite their complex and standardized design, not a single contemporary written account of them has ever been found. No Roman text mentions their existence or their purpose. Are they sophisticated measuring devices for range-finding? Were they used as decorative candlestick holders? Or were they, as some have suggested, esoteric religious artifacts or tools for divination? They remain a perfect enigma, a piece of precise Roman engineering whose function has been utterly lost to time. At number 9, we have a map that seems to see the impossible, the Piri Reis map of 1513. Created by the Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Reis, this map is remarkable for its detailed depiction of the coastlines of Europe, North Africa, and Brazil. But the true mystery lies in its southern portion, which appears to show the coast of Antarctica. This is a profound anomaly, as Antarctica was not officially discovered until 1820. More shockingly, the map seems to depict the coastline of Queen Maudland free of ice. The last time that part of Antarctica was not covered by a massive ice cap was several thousand years ago. Piri Reis himself noted that his map was compiled from numerous older source maps, some dating back to the time of Alexander the Great. Did ancient and medieval cartographers have access to a form of lost knowledge, a map of the world as it was in a forgotten epoch before the ice came? While modern analysis suggests the coastline may be a distorted representation of South America, the question remains a tantalizing whisper of a forgotten age of exploration. Our eighth artifact takes us to the sands of Egypt. In 1898, in a tomb in Saqqara, archaeologists discovered a small, six-inch wooden object that resembles nothing so much as a modern aircraft. Known as the Saqqara bird, this artifact, dating back to around 200 BC, has the distinct shape of a glider, with a fuselage, wings, and a tail fin. Unlike other bird figures from ancient Egypt, its wings are perfectly airfoil shaped, and its tail is vertical like the rudder of a plane, not horizontal like a bird's tail. 
While mainstream Egyptology classifies it as a ceremonial object or a high-class children's toy, attempts to build replicas have shown that it has genuine aerodynamic properties and is capable of gliding. Was this simply a sculptor's whim, or is it a small-scale model of a much larger functional glider, evidence that the ancient Egyptians understood the principles of flight long before the Wright brothers? At number seven, we find a marvel of ancient metallurgy that defies the laws of chemistry, the Iron Pillar of Delhi. Standing in the Kutab complex in Delhi, India, this seven-meter-tall pillar of iron has stood exposed to the elements for over 1,600 years. And yet, it has barely rusted. The pillar is composed of 98% wrought iron, a material that should, by all rights, have corroded into dust centuries ago in the humid Indian climate. Modern analysis has revealed its secret, a thin, protective layer of Mesa White, a compound of iron, oxygen, and water that formed on its surface and has prevented further corrosion. But how did the ancient Indian metallurgists in the 4th century AD create an iron alloy of such purity and with the precise phosphorus content needed to catalyze the formation of this protective film? It is a feat of chemical engineering that modern blacksmiths struggle to replicate, a silent testament to a lost art of metallurgy. For our sixth entry, we return to Egypt, to the Temple of Hathor at Dendera. Carved into the walls of a crypt are a series of reliefs that have sparked intense debate. They depict elongated, bulbous objects resting on what appear to be insulators, with a cord or stalk extending from one end. Inside each bulb is a wavy, snake-like figure. To many observers, the resemblance to a modern crook's tube or a large primitive light bulb is uncanny and undeniable. Proponents of fringe theories claim this is direct evidence of electricity and advanced lighting technology in ancient Egypt. Mainstream Egyptologists, however, offer a more mundane explanation rooted in Egyptian mythology interpreting the image as a depiction of a lotus flower giving birth to a snake, a symbol of creation. But the question lingers. Is it a myth or is it a schematic? A whisper of a technology that lit up the ancient temples and was then lost to the darkness. At number five is a mystery of information, not engineering. The Voynich Manuscript, it is a book dated to the early 15th century, filled with some 240 pages of elegant flowing script in an unknown alphabet and a language that no one has ever been able to decipher. Its pages are adorned with detailed, colorful illustrations of equally mysterious subjects, fantastical plants that match no known species, strange astronomical charts of unknown constellations, and bizarre diagrams of naked women bathing in intricate green liquid plumbing. For a century, the world's most brilliant cryptographers, including the top codebreakers who cracked the Enigma code in World War II, have tried and failed to break its code. Is it a lost language? an unbreakable cipher hiding alchemical secrets? Or is it the most elaborate and beautiful, meaningless hoax ever created? The manuscript remains a perfect intellectual enigma, a book full of whispers that we cannot understand. Our fourth artifact is a tiny but profoundly significant object, the main penny. This is a genuine Norse coin minted during the reign of Olaf Kyrre between 1065 and 1080 AD. What makes it an OOP art is where it was found, at a Native American archaeological site in the state of Maine, USA, in 1957. The coin shows evidence of being in circulation, 
its discovery is compelling evidence of pre-Columbian contact between the Vikings, who we know had settlements in Newfoundland, and the indigenous peoples of mainland North America. It suggests a level of trade and travel far more extensive than previously believed. A whisper that the story of the discovery of the Americas is far more complex than the one we were taught. At number three, we have an object that suggests a forgotten understanding of electricity, the Baghdad battery. Discovered in the 1930s near Baghdad, Iraq, these artifacts are simple terracotta pots dating back to the Parthian period around 200 BC. Inside each pot is a copper cylinder and suspended in the center of the cylinder, insulated by asphalt, is an iron rod. There is no written record of their purpose, but their construction is strikingly similar to a modern galvanic cell. Experiments have shown that when the pot is filled with an acidic electrolyte, like vinegar or grape juice, it can generate a steady electrical voltage of about 1.5 to 2 volts. While this is not enough to power a light bulb, it is more than enough for processes like electroplating, where a thin layer of gold or silver is deposited on another metal. Did ancient artisans in Baghdad rediscover a lost form of electrical science? At number two is the undisputed king of all OOP arts, an object so complex it rewrites history all on its own. The Antikyra Mechanism. We have dedicated an entire episode to this marvel, but it must be included here. Discovered in a 2,000-year-old Roman shipwreck, this corroded lump of bronze was revealed through modern imaging to be a sophisticated analog computer of breathtaking complexity. With over 30 interlocking bronze gears, it could predict the positions of the sun and moon, the phases of the moon, and even the timing of solar and lunar eclipses for decades into the future. It contained a differential gear, a level of mechanical engineering that was not thought to have been invented for another 1400 years. It is a physical whisper from the Hellenistic world that their understanding of both cosmology and engineering was on a level we are only just beginning to appreciate. And finally, at number one, we have an artifact so old and so sophisticated that it doesn't just challenge our timeline of technology, it challenges our entire understanding of the origin of human civilization itself. This is Gobekli Tepe. Located in modern-day Turkey, it is a vast complex of massive T-shaped stone pillars, many intricately carved with images of animals, arranged in large circles. It is, without a doubt, the oldest known temple complex in the world, and its age is what shatters our understanding of the past. Gobekli Tepe is 12,000 years old. This is a staggering 7,000 years older than Stonehenge and the pyramids of Giza. It was built at a time when humanity was supposed to consist of simple nomadic hunter-gatherer bands. The conventional story of civilization is that agriculture came first, which allowed for settled communities, which then led to the development of complex religion and monumental architecture. Gobekli Tepe reverses this entire narrative. It is a massive, complex, organized construction built by people who had not yet invented pottery, writing, or even agriculture. It suggests that the shared belief system, the need to build something sacred that came first, and that this act of coming together may have been the very catalyst that sparked the agricultural revolution. It is a whisper from the dawn of the Neolithic age that forces us to question the very origins of society. These ten objects are more than just historical curiosities. They are profound anomalies.
While some may eventually be explained away, others, like the Antikythera mechanism and Gobekli Tepe, stand as powerful and undeniable challenges to our simple, linear story of human progress. They are whispers from lost worlds, from forgotten golden ages and intellectual traditions that were erased by time. They remind us that history is not a straight road, but a complex, fractured landscape with peaks of incredible knowledge that were lost and valleys of darkness where that knowledge had to be rediscovered. And they leave us with the most humbling question of all. What other impossible things are still buried beneath the sands, waiting to shatter our understanding of who we are? Does the existence of these artifacts make you question the official story of history? Like this video if you were fascinated by these mysteries. Share it with anyone who loves a good historical enigma. And comment below, which out-of-place artifact do you find the most compelling?